guys, how's it going? We are just gonna be working on a little bit of this and that today. I have several small projects that I just wanted to bring you along for. Uh, we're out in the greenhouse where it is 67 degrees currently. Don't even have to have a coat on. It's wonderful out here. I'm still looking out at snow on the ground outside of the greenhouse. But when the sun comes out, even though we have the temperature set at 50 in here, it just warms it up so beautifully in here. So I've got some more water jugs behind me. We're gonna get a little bit more winter sewing done. I'm gonna start some blue poppies today. This is a total experiment. And the packet even says it's for experienced gardeners only. Uh, that doesn't bode well for me. I hope it goes well. I've got some lettuce to reseed, some ferns that are kind of an in, in, in an embarrassing state that I have to show you. But first, look at these hyacinths. This one is starting to bloom. I've got pink ones that are in full bloom inside right now and some pr other purple ones. Uh, I don't know if they're the same variety of purple, but they I have three that were way further along than this one uh, that I potted up and put on our dining room table. Anyway, I can smell them right here. They smell wonderful. Here are the water jugs. We have two, four, six, eight, ten water jugs to fill. And I've got six different seeds that I brought out today. So we're gonna be putting the pink dandelions, which are a, it says on the back, they are a less prolific member of the dandelion family, but they have the sweetest pink blooms. And I ordered these in a moment of winter desperation, I think, but we're gonna give them a shot because I think they're pretty. I'm going to winter sow more lupins. Uh, we've got spotted bee balm here, some echinacea, paradiso, paradiso, super duper, some larkspur, which works really well with this method. And then since I'm having such spotty luck with the Pacific Giants inside, I'm gonna try them out here in the water jugs. I have the black giant, or was it black giant? Anyway, I have another variety of delphinium that's beautiful inside. So I don't know what the deal is with this variety. These are the blue poppies we are starting. One of you guys sent this packet of seeds out to me and see on the back right here, uh, recommended for experienced gardeners only. When you read that on the seed packet, like that's kind of scary. <laughs> So it came with this whole list of instructions and it does say that they want to be started in a cool greenhouse, which is what we have. It's not hot in here, it's cool, but it's not gonna freeze. So this might be ideal location to get these going. I have no idea. Don't know what I'm doing with these. Lettuce, we are going to seed more of that right in here. You can see that the first crop that I planted, the spinach is coming up beautifully. Can't remember what variety this is, but it's coming up great. And whatever variety I put here, I just need to look back on that, but it's not coming up great. There's like one right there. I mean, I, you could say, well, maybe it's slow or maybe the seed was just way too old. I tend to hold on to seed maybe longer than I should but we'll go ahead and seed some new stuff in here today. Oh, and there's the ferns. So sad, but they still have a little bit of life. Look at, see the green in there? I had these ferns in our front sun porch. It got cold this winter. I forgot to turn the floor heater on in there. It was sitting in there. So in my mind, I thought I had it on. I knew I had plugged it in, but I didn't turn it on and it got way too cold in there and it just killed the tops off of these and a couple other things. I had an Aurelia in there. Uh, what else did it take? It did not take my Maranta begonia. I got that inside and it's fine. Uh, the Pegasus begonia did fine, which is surprising to me. Oh, uh, I was a Pia tree Ivy. It took that as well. So anyway, I'm gonna attempt to cut these back, leave them in here and see what happens. I think since there are some green leaves and still like in the inside, we might be okay. We're also gonna cut back this calendula, which looks really sad, but there is new green growth at the base. So I'm thinking we will have a rebound on this plant. And then you can see our olive tree is looking really, really great. And I'm gonna do a little bit of research because I've never rooted an olive before, but it's got two beautiful shoots off the bottom. And I'd like to try to cut those because I really want this to be a, like a standard form. It has one main trunk, but it looks more like a bush right now. So I'm gonna cut those off at some point and root those so that we can maintain our nice rounded top. I think we'll start with the lettuce and maybe the plant cut back first before I make a huge mess with the winter sowing. Okay, so I got this Merlot lettuce in my Baker Creek seed order. They just threw this in as a free packet, which they normally throw something in. And then we've got Marvel of Four Seasons right here, which I got out of the bulk bins down at the garden center. Uh, the lettuce seed needs to go about a quarter inch deep. So I'm gonna seed it really thick, kind of like I did over here. And I'll just kind of rough it up with my fingers. It's a pretty quick process and then we'll water it in. 
Okay, project number one complete. And maybe it was a good thing that that little patch didn't come up because then we'll have kind of a successive crop. Um, we won't have all of it ready to cut at the same time. I am thinking about planting up this second bed though. Um, I want to do more spinach because we eat more spinach than anything. And then um, some radishes. I'd like to get some of those going and I think that they would do great in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It says it's 69 in here now. This Japanese maple looks like it needs a little water. And isn't it crazy that we just look right outside the greenhouse and there's all the containers we planted the bulbs in this fall covered with snow still. And there's some other water jugs back there, winter sowing. It's all toasty in here and all chilly out there. Okay, let's cut back calendula and ferns. You know, if you wanted to, you could harvest all of these blooms right here and you could make yourself a nice calendula salve if you had the time. <laughs> Doesn't that look better? You can see that I did plant it in the center, but the main trunk kind of took off in one direction, but there's a lot of nice kind of fresh stems down here that have new leaves on them. So that should be really fun. I think it'll be great. And I'm gonna take a quick break from planting in here because Erin wants to go check out a few potential areas we may plant in our city this next year. So we are downtown in our city right now. And this seems like a really obvious choice to help with uh, landscaping around the gazebo that once lived in our own garden. So we're kind of just down here scoping it out again, kind of looking at what we have to deal with with the backdrop. The city might expand this park a little bit, uh, but there's a lot of potential here. You can also see one of the pots from the project that I started a lot of years ago. And they're still going. There isn't an evergreen in here right now, but they'll be ready to plant these up for spring here pretty soon. The city also installed a bunch of bump outs at the end of every block. So you can see over here too, there's a little planting area. There's a planting area over here. They've already installed a rock and they were doing some trials with some um, more drought tolerant lavender and rudbeckia. But let's take a closer look up here and tell me what you guys would do. There are two areas right under the trees. I don't know how easy they would be to plant but maybe some kind of a ground cover perennial that's really pretty. They also installed these flower beds right alongside the walkway leading up to the gazebo. I mean, we could do some really neat things in that. There's another area here. In fact, there's a fountain right over here. I think it's a fountain or it was supposed to be a fountain or something, I think. Let's look, yeah. There's a hole there and I can see pond liner. So I'm guessing that there's a reservoir under there. I think it would be really fun to do something up against this building and fence, like cut out a big deep flower bed and create some kind of a beautiful bank of plants right there. Anyway, it's kind of a fun thing to plan for and think about for this next growing season. And we will for sure uh, show you guys. If we do projects down here, we will bring you along for all of them. Okay, we just made it back home. We just kind of drove around after we looked at the gazebo area just to get a better feel for it. I mean, I've been down in that park lots of times in my life, but when you're getting ready to do some planting or thinking about doing planting, it's good just to stand there and really get a feel for the space again and how big the planting areas are or could be um, and start to dream of some new ideas. And then we went around and looked there's a couple other really nice parks in our town uh, that have some potential areas. So we'll see what happens. Uh, now I want to tackle the ferns. That's our next thing before we start planting some seeds. Oh, I just want to be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Poor things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my pruners and cut back most of it. I'll try to single out the nice leaves uh, and leave those. But I think the plant, I think the roots are okay. And I think the plant will produce more new growth here pretty quick. Good job, dude. You getting them all cut? 
Okay, so they're not looking the best, but they look a lot better than they did just now. And I noticed about halfway through the cutback process that I hadn't got my camera turned all the way on. So I missed the cutback on the first two, which was very satisfying to see because there was more green growth in those two. So like this one right here, like that's promising, right? And there's a whole bunch of new growth in here. And the fact that I can see like there's one living leaf right here, a little bit of green down in here, I think will be okay. I did kind of repot this one because it had pushed itself up. So I kind of roughed up the root ball a little bit and sunk it further down in its pot. So I think I'm gonna go grab some fertilizer and we'll give them all a little shot of food. Okay, those are all done, fertilized. You might've noticed I did top them up with a little bit of fresh potting soil as well, uh, just around the tops. I'm hoping that in maybe even two, three weeks, we'll see a little halo of green on each one of these. And what are you doing, Samantha? Are you enjoying the warm greenhouse? Your hair is wild. You got some static like your mama. Erin's sister Alyssa is watching the kids today. She's playing with them and uh, so she brought them out here to enjoy the heat for a little while. I need to figure out some kind of setup for the kids out here during this time of year where we can just come out and just relax out in the warmth. So now we're gonna work on all the winter sowing. I'm gonna prep the water jugs first. Essentially winter sowing is just a different method of starting seeds. We have done uh, videos more in depth than I will probably go in this video. So maybe we'll link one or two of them down below. Um, but we're at this time of year, just starting things like hardy perennials, cold tolerant annuals. So like today, I already showed you what I'm starting, I think, uh, but like the larkspur is an annual for us, but it's cold tolerant and it needs a period, the seeds need a period of cold in order to germinate. Uh, the rest of what I have here are perennials. So it's a great time of year to start those kinds of things. However, we are quickly getting into the territory where we can start some of the warm stuff. So probably next month, you could winter sow things like tomatoes and those sorts of things. So anyway, usually I'm starting those in trays. I've never tried those with the winter sowing method yet. So essentially we're creating little greenhouses for them to grow up in, for the seeds to germinate. They'll be outside. Uh, they'll have this little you know, greenhouse top over them, but they'll be subjected to way more of the elements than they would be inside in an indoor growing environment. So they're usually tougher. So what I'm gonna do first before I get the whole area dirty is I'm going to use my razor blade to cut this uh, water jug in half. So I start right on the left to the left of the handle and I go all the way around and then I stop right here to where this is not cut and it creates a little bit of a hinge so it stays together. So, uh, oh, and before I do that, we need to pop four drainage holes in the bottom and I just use my, my uh, razor for that as well. So let's prep all of these and let's get the soil ready. I'm using regular organic potting mix. I'm going to pre-moisten it and I'll put it in the bottom of each one of these containers. them all prepped. 
So this is what they should look like. I've got four drainage holes on the bottom of each one of these containers, uh, cut in half almost all the way, just enough to leave a little hinge. And the tops, you wanna remove lids. So no matter what container you're using, there needs to be a way for moisture to enter the container because basically we're gonna be relying on rainfall and or snow to water these for the most part. In areas like ours where it can tend to be dry for a really long period of time, even with winter sowing, we have to check them on a period periodic basis. Like right now there's snow all the way around the containers out back, but that doesn't mean they're not still drying out on the inside because if we're not getting any active moisture from the sky, um, there's nothing to go in through the top of the container. So it's just something to keep in mind, but we're looking for any kind of container that will allow light through. So it can be clear plastic or like this one is kind of a frosted plastic, but light still gets in and it works. So it could be, you know, orange juice containers, milk jugs that have been rinsed out. These were water jugs. Um, a lot of people will use like rotisserie chicken kind of packaging. Is that right? Like with a black bottom and then it has a clear dome on top. That works perfect. Some people use totes. Uh, there are a lot of different things that you can use for this method. And the wonderful thing about it uh, is that it doesn't take up any room inside. It doesn't take any special equipment or expensive equipment. It takes no grow lights. They just wake up kind of on the natural rhythm of how things are going outside. Uh, and it's just kind of a, almost for us, it's almost a do it and forget sort of thing other than, you know, every, I don't know, one to two weeks we go out and I just peer in through the top of the hole to make sure they haven't dried out. Okay, so now I need to decide how many of each one of these I want to plant today. I've got six different types of seed and 10 different containers. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the larkspur out because I'm gonna direct seed this along with a bunch of other larkspur that I have just directly in the soil. Once I can work the soil, it worked great for me last year. I didn't like pre-refrigerate the seeds or anything. I just popped them out the very first thing I planted last spring and we had a huge windstorm that same night. I thought all my seeds had blown away. They ended up all coming up and it was a thick, beautiful, patch and I'm I'm almost thinking they're probably going to reseed right where they were pretty thickly. Anyway, so if I eliminate this, I can do two water jugs of all the other varieties that I have here. And some people will uh, seed them very thickly. So when they take them out of the container, you separate all the seedlings. I like to go a little bit further between so it's easier to tear them apart and you're not disrupting so much of their roots. Um, I feel like it's a little less, less shock on the plant. And then you do need to have a way to label them. So I'm just using white duct tape to tape them together once we've planted our seeds and I just write with a garden whoops I write with a garden marker right here directly on the tape it works really well okay so let's take a close-up look here we've got our pretty moistened soil we're going to plant some delphiniums in this one they need to be planted an eighth of an inch deep you still want to follow all the instructions as per the package and in terms of planting depth and I'm gonna make nine planting sites here. I think that'll be perfect. And I'm gonna pop two seeds in each planting site. They're pretty small. Okay, so two in each hole. Cover the seeds up just slightly. And then I write on the tape before I take it off the roll. Let me close it up. Oh, I gotta water it first, hang on. Then we close it up. So this one is ready to go outside. that wherever your containers end up, they're in a sunny location. Uh, because when those seedlings do germinate in the spring, unless you plan on moving your containers to a more bright spot once that happens, those seedlings do need strong light in order to be really healthy and not leggy. Uh, back here behind the greenhouse, it looks pretty shaded right now and it is in the winter when the sun is lower in the sky. But as the season progresses and we get closer and closer to summer, uh, that sun moves up in the sky and that is actually a fairly sunny location. So I'll be keeping my eye on it. But typically like I'll store perennials 
little sun-loving perennials back there that are waiting for projects, and they do just great. Okay, the last thing I think we're gonna tackle, I was gonna do some container clean out, but I wasn't expecting to go around town with Aaron, um, so I don't know that I have enough light, but I wanna get those poppies seeded in here. This is going to be interesting. I don't even know how many seeds are in here. This might be an overreaction of a tray, but I need to mix up some seed starting mix first. There's a little bit of regular putting soil left and I think that's okay. I'll just mix it in with the seed stuff. So this is really good for indoor seed starting. It's a loftier blend that helps the roots form a little bit easier. When we're doing winter sowing, I use the seed starting mix the first time I did winter sowing and it just dried out a lot faster. When I used this one last year, it held the moisture so much better. So that's all I'm using for winter sowing now. But these poppies are going to be here in the greenhouse. So I think that this is gonna be good. Okay, so in the instructions on this, it says you can seed these anytime from early fall to spring in a cool greenhouse. And if a cool greenhouse is not available, the seed can be started under a cold frame outdoors provided there's no danger of frost. And then it goes on to say, it is only to be expected that an elusive magical flower like this is a little hard to grow. But if you follow these easy directions, success is assured. Germinate seed in semi-darkness, a temp around 60 degrees, so the seed very lightly, so the seedlings come up away from each other. So I'm just gonna do one seed per cell. And germination, like be what it may, at least they'll come up away from each other. Um, that, because they are prone to damping off. So cover with a light layer of vermiculite to keep moist. Okay, approximately two weeks after germination, move to a cooler site but keep well shaded at all times. And then transplant seedlings to in individual three inch peat pots at the two leaf st stage. Finally, when two or three large matchbox size leaves have developed, plant outside still in the peat pot so roots are not disturbed. The hush hush secret with this plant is to grow in a cool and well shaded location. <laughs> I don't know if, hopefully this flower is worth all the fuss and hopefully it grows. Okay, keep free from weeds and slugs. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy one of nature's supreme displays. All right, these seeds are itty bitty. This is gonna take me a minute. So they came in this tiny envelope inside the seed packet. I wonder if you can get these pelletized. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Okay. So I didn't have quite enough poppies to fill the whole tray, but I was able to fill these three rows and then this six pack right here. So that's 60 cells filled with poppy seeds, hopefully. And then these two right here, I just went ahead and seeded more Pixie Delight lupins just so I didn't waste the space. Um, a layer of vermiculite over the top. So the lupins went 1 8 of an inch deep and then the blue poppies are surface sown. And then the vermiculite helps keep some moisture levels in and fungal issues at bay. And I say that I hopefully have 60 cells filled because those seeds were so incredibly tiny and I only did one per cell and I'm pretty sure I planted some um, chaff. <laughs> I couldn't really tell. There were some that didn't really feel like seeds but I went ahead and planted it anyway. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm gonna put a dome over the top of it because I feel like that's the right thing to do. I know the instructions didn't say anything about that. And I'm just gonna leave it in here and see what happens. I watered them in with a spray bottle because I felt like that was a more gentle stream and I don't wanna dislodge any of those tiny little seeds. But it should be a really fun experiment to see if it works. If you guys, any of you have tried growing these, let me know, hopefully with some encouragement that they're not as hard as the packet makes them seem. And that's gonna be it for today, you guys. Super nice day out here in the greenhouse. I have a feeling we have a lot more of these headed our way. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a really great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.